a great thing. So, uh, all right, a little bit uh, real quickly about myself, and I, I can't say it enough. Where, wherever I go, I want people to first and foremost know I'm a flawed sinner saved by grace. I, I'm a Christian. I, I say the most important thing you can ever know about me is my relationship with Jesus Christ. I am flawed. I make mistakes. Uh, but it is because of my Lord and Savior uh, that I can be here before you today. I I'm the father of three. I'm the youngest of four. A lot of people say, man, if you're the youngest child, you've got no chance at being good at, uh, uh, in business. I, you know, I say this, that everybody has an opportunity to do anything that they want. Uh, I was blessed to have two great older brothers and an older sister that always pushed me and wanted me to be successful. Very thankful. Uh, because of my great team, and I say this, the great team at BFAC.com, the Madison County Chamber of Commerce named me their Executive of the Year. Uh, what a blessing that is uh, for me because I say this, if you're getting ready to start a business, I was in your shoes eight years ago. Um, I was looking for a way to better my life, better my family's life, and I was a news anchor at Channel 16. If you ever watched the news, I was the tall, goofy-looking blonde guy on Channel 16. Uh, I, I mean, I had so much fun doing that job, but I kept feeling God calling me to do a little bit more. Uh, but it was just a wonderful experience doing that. A little bit about BFAC, if you're not familiar. Uh, we're actually the number one mobile app company in the entire southeastern United States. We have 37 states as our clients. Now let, me, let me pause for a second. I don't mean clients in 37 states. I mean 37 actual states as our clients. California, Ohio, Missouri, Texas, Oklahoma, um, all our clients at BFAC.com. We work with some of the largest names you've seen. If you watched the Super Bowl and you saw Pepsi, they're a client of ours. Ozarka Water, they're a client of ours. Bobby Bowden, the Hall of Fame football coach, is a spokesperson for our company. Uh, we have been really, really fortunate. We started, again, right here in Mississippi. We started in a home without a backyard or even a garage. Uh, participated in Innovate Mississippi's New Venture Challenge. Uh, we were fortunate enough to win that competition and it has really changed our lives. It's changed our focus and again, we were really searching for a way to grow. Now, I was hearing in the other room where they called it like this, uh, uh, I don't know, Valley of Death. The Valley of Death. We were near the Valley of Death. Let me say this, uh, it was not hard. Um, it was very difficult. Uh, to get our business up and running. Uh, we did not have million dollar investors. Uh, again, we started in a home without a backyard or even a garage. We had two people that both had full-time jobs, uh, but we dared to dream, but we also dared to live the dream, uh, which was the most important part. I say this, if you want anything that's difficult, you're gonna have to work your tail off to get it. And you've also gotta be smart you got to use wisdom. I always say that the wisdom of Proverbs, you've got to surround yourself by people that are sometimes completely different from you and get the best advice possible to grow your business. Um, when I say this to you, in October 2010, a couple months after I left the TV station, I had to borrow money to feed my family. Let me say that. It was not to pay the mortgage. It was not to you know, pay a car payment. It was to actually put food on the table. Now, I don't know the struggle that somebody has in Togo, West Africa. I don't know um, what it's like to be persecuted for my skin color or uh, for my gender or anything like that. But I know from my own life, from my own experience, that was a very great challenge. Uh, and I say this, I don't want to say it was a hard life, but it was difficult for me in trying to find a way to survive. But fast forwarding to today, uh, now I stand before you, our company is completely debt free. We have no loans, no credit cards of any kind. Um, I, I literally work with some of the greatest employees in the world. Our, all our staff drives really nice company cars now and they're all paid off. Um, we just bought a company limousine so our staff could use it to take out family and friends and all these different things. I mean, God has been so good to us. But I'm telling you today, but you must understand yesterday. It was not always like that. Um, there were two different times that we came within $50 of closing. So let me say that. Two different times we came within $50 of closing. Um, just got to understand this. If it was easy, everybody would do it. Okay? If it was easy to run a business, everyone would do it. My inspiration actually came from my father, 
who started a restaurant and it went belly up. Now he refused to file for bankruptcy, so instead he worked a side job that we didn't even know about um, for almost nine years. He drove 30 miles away and delivered pizza at night when we were in bed. You know, it's that kind of work ethic. So a lot of people said, you know, wouldn't that have discouraged you from starting your own business? And I said, no, here's the great part. My dad is pushing 70 years old today. He's a survivor of the Oklahoma City bombing, but he has no regret. How would you feel if you had a big house, really, really nice cars, but you were miserable because you didn't follow your passion that God laid on your heart? You know, there's a reason why you like certain things. There's a reason why you want to do certain things because God created you that way. Now, make no mistake, he's the perfect one, okay? There are people that love weather, and there are people like me that actually had to be a meteorologist and I knew nothing about weather, okay? You know, God's got a great sense of humor in that, but I'm just saying this, if you've got a passion, you need to follow your passion. Uh, but, you know, 7-Elevens in the world, uh, it's amazing how we've been blessed to be able to work with them. All right, what year is it? Obviously, we know it's 2015, right? Now, in 2015, you have to know this, the number one form of communication in every county in Mississippi is texting. The number one source of information in every county in Mississippi, mobile apps. And there are more than a billion people on social media in the world. I, I show this because when I was speaking at the superintendent's convention in January, the front page of the newspaper said, guess what, it could snow. All right? Aha, but the New Orleans NBC affiliate at 11.33 in the morning found out school was canceled. So two minutes later, they were able to let every one of their viewers know school was canceled. Now, I say that to you that when I was in the news business and we found out about Bernie Ever stepping down and the downfall of WorldCom, we knew about that story for five hours before anybody else did. And so when I sat on the news on that for the very first time, now I say this, that when the, we had a local meteorologist here named Eric Law, all right, from WLBT, when he was arrested, I argue there wasn't a single person in this market by five o'clock that didn't know about it, okay? Why is that? Because we've all got a cell phone in our pocket and people are communicating via text message, via push notification, via social media, so you're never out of the loop anymore. You know, that's crucial to see. This is the old way of doing things, and this is the 2015 way of doing things. This picture is the most important picture I'm gonna show you. And it's actually two years old. So I'll even get out of the way so you can see a better picture. This is 2005 at the Vatican, at the exact moment that the Pope was announced. Okay, you see this lady over here with her flip phone popping it out going, this is a religious event. I probably don't wanna show somebody that I've got a cell phone, but I'm gonna pop it out. Now let me show you 2013, two years ago, guys. NBC News did a story on it because they said there were 16,480 people outside the Vatican at the moment the smoke went up and they announced the new pope. Do you know how many of them didn't have a smartphone or a tablet recording the event? Zero. Let me repeat that. Zero. I remember being in my church, Broadmoor Baptist Church, and seeing a friend of mine, Jason Griffin, who owns a Taekwondo school here locally, getting out his iPad and like pointing to my friends and going, what is he doing in church with his iPad? He needs to put that away. It's not a good time to get on Facebook. He was opening up this thing called the Bible app. Okay? I mean, you probably remember that person in church that had their smartphone out. Like, what, are they, what is that person doing, right? Now, if you see somebody with a smartphone or a tablet out in church, it's just perfectly normal. Okay? This is the way the world used to be 10 years ago. This is what the world was like two years ago. Let me give you some updated statistics. Do you know how many active SIM cards there are in the world today? Active. That means not dead. Active. 7 billion. Okay? That's a billion more than the entire world's population. Think about that. Everybody you come in contact with, everybody in your business you come in contact with, everyone in your school, everyone in your bank has one thing in common. It's not their religion, it's not their gender, it's not their race, it's not their favorite sports team, it's that they all have a cell phone in their pocket. Never forget that. So why would you need texting? Okay, we talked about it's the most uh, used form of communication, right? Actually, if you take every phone call made, and you put it in one pop, I'm talking about cell phones, landlines, pay phones, and internet phones. 
and you took that and combined it into one total, you're actually going to have to multiply it by three to get the amount of text messages sent every day in the United States. Now, last year, at 4.5 billion text messages a day, do you know how many of them were open? 98% of them. Now, let me compare that to email. Okay? You know what the read rate of email was in 2014? 4%. So, if your business's number one way of communication with your clients or prospective clients is your email, you can either have a 4% read rate or a 98% read rate. Think about yourself. I always say that the key to marketing is to take the mirror off the wall and look yourself in the mirror and go, what would I do? So, I'm going to ask you the question. How many emails today, not yesterday, today have you ignored or deleted without reading? Just today. Most of them, right? We're all going over 10, 20, 30 emails, right? Just today. Now, in your entire life, how many text messages have you not read? Lifetime. You read every one of them, it takes over your phone, right? If I was going to China and I was going to open up a business, you want the number one thing the US government would tell you to do? Be able to speak their language. If you speak Chinese, you are going to do much better in China than if you don't. Right? Now, think about the United States. All right? There are people that come from all over the world to start a business here. All right? What's the greatest obstacle they have? The language barrier. Right? So, if you know the number one form of communication in every state in the country is texting, shouldn't you talk to people that way? Think about it. I mean, we have the governor as a client and the attorney general. They're both separate parties, right? They don't get along politically. Do you know what they have in common? Neither one of them have a voicemail. The reason why they don't have a voicemail is because they get 100,000 calls a day. They actually get six voicemail messages a day. But when they return those calls, they're nice, they're polite, they're sweet, they ask what's going on in the world, and it takes them 45 minutes on the phone. So if they do that six times, the whole day is gone. So they're saying, text me and I'll get it, right? Text me and we'll make it happen. There are 34 million more active cell phones in the United States of America than every man, woman, and child alive in the United States. Again, these aren't dead cell phones. All right, mobile apps. So why in the world should your business or organization have a mobile app? Here's the key. Mobile apps are used more than websites. That started in June of 2011. Mobile apps are used more than mobile websites. How many times have you heard, get a responsive thing for your, your company, that's all you need, you don't need a mobile app, right? That is a lie, okay? That is a flat out, unbelievable lie. Why am I gonna talk to this one real quick? This is from Forbes Magazine in November. This is not a marketing survey. This is not somebody's opinion. This is not research. This is actual black and white analytics conducted on every single Apple device that was made. iPhone and iPad, doesn't matter the generation. You know what they found? 86% of the time that somebody was on their iPad or their iPhone, they were on mobile apps. Compared to 14% on mobile websites or websites. So, if your business model right now is SEO, search engine optimization, building that mobile website because everybody's mobile, you are battling it out for the 14%. This is not my opinion, this is black and white analytics. This is what's going on right now. This is 2015 right now. And it's not that people are lazy. Let me make that clear, I'm gonna go back to the other staff. It's not that people are lazy. But why would I want to search the Google bar every single time for a subject when I can do it one time, download it on my phone, and I'm done? So anytime I ever want PF chains, I touch one button, I get their food whenever I want. Anytime I want Domino's, I touch one button, and I'm done, right? Papa John's, touch one button, and I'm done. Now Taco Bell. Taco Bell said, you know what? I'm sick and tired of doing a commercial that says make a run for the border, and they sit there and they do nothing. Now, what do they do in the Taco Bell commercials now? They show their app, and they say, hey, order right now, we'll give you a free taco. So go look at the stock. Go look at what happened to Taco Bell ever since they unveiled their new app. This is what was going on for three years. Uh-oh. Because they engage the people. I always tell this to anybody that does a television commercial. 
What is your call to action? Hey, we've got cars. We've got lots of cars. Is that going to get you to go buy a car? Nope. But if you say, hey, here is a specific car for a specific price. Here's an interest rate. Here's something we can do for you right now today. Come today. That's going to appeal to somebody in the room. You know, what are you doing in your advertising and your marketing to reach out to people? What's crazy about apps? Well, there are billions of websites, billions, right? Remember, that's the 14% time, right? Billions of people are battling for the 14%. Do you know how many apps there are in the world today? The entire world. And I'm talking about games, I'm talking about schools, I'm talking about small businesses, I'm talking about universities. Every app ever created, you know how many there are? 1.3 million. So if you have an app in your business, it's like having a phone book ad in 1975. It's where the people are and that's where they're going to find you. Let me kind of, I want to say this, simplify it. If you Google search Mississippi right now on your phone, you're going to find out there are 400 million websites that have Mississippi in 400 million. If you go to the App Store and you search Mississippi, that means any app that even mentions the word Mississippi, you know how many you're going to find? 527. 527. 527. Do you know there's more than 500 businesses on County Line Road? But there's 500 worldwide that even mention the word Mississippi. We had a client named Frank Fair who came in and said, I do background checks. And you know, I'm going to businesses, I'm going door to door trying to do background checks, and it's really hard for me to break through the glass ceiling. So somebody said, you need to go to BFAC and get a mobile app. So he came to BFAC, got a mobile app. When he came in for his training, he's like, what's this 200 number? That's how many people are walking around town with your app already. But I don't have a Facebook page. I don't have a Twitter page. How did they find out about me? There are more cell phones in Jackson than there are people. And when you see people at the ball game, or when you see people out shopping, or when you see people going to the movies, is anybody carrying a computer? Nope. When they're going through the drive through what do they have? They have their smartphone. We already showed the statistic. 86% of their time is on mobile apps. Here's the thing. Think logically. What is a TV being made today? It's called a smart TV. Why? Because it's built for mobile apps. Apple is unveiling a watch that they expect to sell millions of. You know what it's built around? Apps. What are tablets built around? Apps. Why is a phone considered smart? Apps. It saves you time. It saves you energy. Now Samsung at the electronic show in Las Vegas, when I was there speaking at the Furniture Marketing Commission, they just finished talking about a new refrigerator that's built around mobile apps. I rented a Dodge Durango, not a Mercedes-Benz, not a Lexus, a Dodge Durango to go to the coast with my kids. I hit the start button, the very first thing that came on the screen was the Dodge app. The next thing was, what apps do you want on your home screen? I'm just saying, do you want your business there or do you want to wait until your competition gets it? And if I'm telling you this, if you think, well, sometime, some way, I'm gonna get a mobile app, you are missing the opportunity of a lifetime. Instagram, we all have heard of Instagram, right? Instagram sold for a billion dollars in 2011. Here's the crazy part. How many of you think Instagram had a website when it sold for a billion dollars? They didn't. How many of you think they had a TV commercial? They didn't. Radio spot didn't. How about a Google AdWords campaign? Didn't. So how in the world did Instagram sell for a billion dollars. They had a share feature in their app that allowed one person to tell another. Every app we make has that. So one person in one room can share your business intimately and personally with 5,000 people in under a minute. And it's not coming from business A or business B. It's coming from that person who downloaded the app's personal cell phone number. So it's coming in as a text, and we know what happens with text, right? They're red. Here's the other thing I want to show you. 64% of consumers view a brand or a business who has a mobile app more favorably than a brand that doesn't. You know why? Because they think, number one, they're more trustworthy because you can quote shop their price even though your price may not even be in the app. Number two, they're going to believe that they're cutting edge. They're 2015. Whatever they're doing, whether it's safety, maybe it's processing, 
maybe it's something to do with development with the product, it's better than the other guys because they've got a mobile app. I love this using about this Integris Medical Center out of Oklahoma City. They did a research project. They showed a picture of a doctor holding an iPad mini with the hospital app on it. And they showed a picture of another doctor holding a clipboard. And they said, which doctor? Ask yourself this question. Which doctor would you rather get medical advice today on? Which doctor of those two would you rather perform surgery on? Do you want the doctor that got his medical school license in 1985? Or do you want the doctor that just learned the greatest cancer research in the world and is walking in with it today? Well, here's the crazy part. 300 people in the survey, all 300 picked the doctor with the iPad mini and the app. The crazy part is it was actually the same doctor in both photos. <laughs> Perception is reality in business. Another stat for you. This says consumers spend almost the same amount of time on apps as they do watching TV, which is two and a half hours a day. When we made that slide, that was true. Now people spend more time on mobile apps than they do watching TV. But we're not waiting five years for that to happen. It's happening right now. I'll use an example. This is not a client of our Starbucks. Starbucks CEO decided to make a decision in 2012 to eliminate all TV, all radio, and all print advertising. He said, I'm going to do two things. I'm going to do texting and I'm going to do a mobile app. Why? Because everybody that walks into Starbucks has one thing in common. They have a phone in their pocket. Now, everybody thought the guy was nuts. Right? Stock dip. They're like, this guy's crazy. He almost got fired. But by the end of the year, Starbucks had sold more coffee and made more money than at any other time in history. And they asked him why he went against the grain. He said, I didn't go against the grain. I went right with it. I mean, right now, if you go state of Mississippi, how many people are JSU fans? How many are Mississippi State fans? How many are Ole Miss fans? How, right? You go through all, how many are Braves fans? All four state. How many are, you go through all these different lists. But it's, how many of you have a cell phone? Bang. Everybody raises their hand. And I know this because I was wrong in this. Oh, only young people have cell phones, right? The number one purchaser, demographic-wise, of smartphones in the United States of America, 55 plus. Crazy stuff. Here's the other thing. Three out of four people use their smartphone, or actually look at their smartphone before making a purchase. Four out of five consumers use their smartphone to shop. If you're not on it, you're missing the boat. Again, this is crazy. 86% of the time on apps compared to 14% on a mobile website or a website. So I was thinking, and I was wrong, that probably 80% of the apps that have been downloaded were games, right? You've got Angry Birds, Lonely Birds, Happy Birds, Developing Birds, Sport Birds, right? I mean, there's a bird game for everything, right? Big Bird's got to get an <laughs> But here's the black and white statistics. I'm going back to Forbes. This is true analytics. You know how many? 20% are games. 20%. 10% is education, 9% is small business. Now here's the thing, when I rewind the clock in my life, I think back to 1995 and going to the mall and seeing a sign that says credit card applications. And there's all these people lined up and there's a clipboard and a pen, okay? There wasn't even a human being there. There was a line of people to get it, right? Because at that time, we were just excited to have a credit card, right? I could have credit, I could actually buy a TV my TV broke without having the money. Right? Think about the commercials back then. Visa, it's everywhere you want to be. American Express, don't leave home without it. MasterCard, accepted by more places. You know what you didn't see in 1995? Anything about interest rate. Nothing about rewards because there wasn't any. Discover did this shocker when they started getting 1% cash back. People were like, well, oh, cash back. Right? Fast forward to 2015, when I got off the plane from Las Vegas, you know what Delta Airlines said? Two free round trip tickets anywhere Delta flies if you fill out a credit card app. So I asked them, how many people have filled out a credit card app? Zero. Best Buy, 20% off your purchase up to $5,000 if you fill out your card. You go to Marshalls, JCPenney, Max, or TJ Maxx, they'll give you 15% off your purchase today. Toys R Us, today if you open a credit card. You know how many people do it? They're like, I already got a credit card in my pocket right here. It's the same thing with mobile apps today as it was in 1995. If you ask somebody to download an app, they'll do it. Sure, local business, yeah, I'll download it. They're actually downloading it even if you don't ask them to do it. But 10 years from now, 
what are you going to do to pay me to get you to download your mobile app? Now this is a really cool thing that we have right here in Mississippi for business. Now, inside your cell phone, it actually knows where you are at all times. Okay? Because of where you are, even when you say I don't want somebody to know where I am, I'm going to turn off my location stuff, they know where you are. Okay? It's one of those things that you say yes to when you buy your phone, and you say yes to when you open up your app store. They've got that information. Now what we're able to do at BFPC is we're able to send messages to people based upon where they are to benefit your business. So if you would like to drop a peg on a Mississippi State football game and say go Bulldogs, well if you call Mississippi State you know it's very, very expensive to do that, right? To, to advertise at the games. But with your mobile app, we can talk to everybody that's in that stadium that has your app that says go Bulldogs and even the people on the street outside the stadium will never get it. Only the people in that stadium. And then you go, you know, let's do Ole Miss at the same time, let's do Southern Miss at the same time. Done. McDonald's is doing a big conference right now in Las Vegas. It started today, it's like the Golden Arches Conference. Everybody that lands in the city of Las Vegas gets a welcome to Las Vegas message from a BFAC app. How cool is that? Now here's what we're able to do, and I'll just use an example, Chick-fil-A and Popeyes. So you got the Chick-fil-A app on my phone, and I'm driving in Baton Rouge, and I pull into a Popeyes, and I'm like, ah, what's a Popeyes today? Chick-fil-A knows I'm there, automated when I pull in, so they send me a thing that says, a free cookie and a free sweet tea on us, thanks for being a loyal customer. Offer expires in 15 minutes. It's automated. Nobody, nobody has to do anything. It's all automated. So instead of spending their money at Popeye's, you see on the video camera, go across the street to Chick-fil-A. So they can think about it. The cookie cost them to get them to come over and spend 10 bucks. Now what's better, that TV commercial that we're DVRing through? The radio commercial that we're switching, if we're even not even listening, we're the Pandora or something else? or the ability to intimately talk to people where they are whenever you want to. That's 2015 technology, and it's alive and well. Think about this in an election cycle. You can circle a neighborhood and go, Bobby and Julie are voting for Governor Phil Bryant. Join them, and the only people that are going to get it are the people in that neighborhood that have the app. So you can localize it that far down. We don't want to offend anybody, right? So you can circle the Christmas parade and say, Merry Christmas from Business A, come join us at 2 o'clock. And the only people that are getting that is the people that have that app that are sitting right there. It's crazy cool stuff. But again, all of these different businesses, think of the top 100 businesses in this world. They have one thing in common. They all have an app and they all have a text. So why would we? Powerful stuff. And I'm going to leave you with this. This thing came out in January. Apple, this is, this is from the Associated Press. Apple had talked about that there was going to be about $25 billion in in-app sales for the year. Now, they made that announcement in December of last year. In the first two weeks of this year, they already surpassed it. So it wasn't like they were looking like five years down the road. They were looking three years ahead of time. And in two weeks, they beat the entire calendar year's projection. Why? Because people are in mobile apps. Again, go back to Forbes, true analytic data. If they're on their phone, 86% of the time they're on mobile apps. People use apps more than websites, more than mobile websites, and now they use apps more than even watching television. It's crazy, and I say this as being a small business owner. We had nothing. We did not have the ability to buy TV advertising. I love TV. I was on TV and I knew it was effective, but I didn't have the ability to buy a $400 spot at the 10 o'clock news. What are TV stations doing now? Download a app, download a app, download a app, download a app, download a app. Because they realize there will come a point where you're just gonna watch your news through your mobile app. And they're already doing it right now, streaming 24 seven. Both WLBT and WAPT are already doing it on their apps. Why? Because that's where they're using them. You know, you now can have the same technology and the same influence as every big company in the world by reaching.